I was watching a video the other day, and the woman in the video was racing to get a project done to submit it to the Rockler Try That Challenge. Now, I generally don't join challenges where I need to make something just to make it. To me, that seems like a waste of time and energy, but more importantly, it is a waste of money. But as I watched the video, I noticed she was making something that she needed, and in the process, she was expanding her skills, abilities, and capabilities. After the video was done, I went into the garage and continued working on my latest commission, a high top table intended to be used as a bar. Imagine a live edge slab hooking up with a farm table and making a baby. That's pretty much the design we settled on. As I was working on the table, I started thinking about all the things in this specific project that I've never done before. Like nearly all projects, I started by flattening the stock, getting a nice edge profile, and then cutting the stock down to rough size. But the project quickly diverged from things that I've done before to a litany of things that I've never done before. Things that would challenge me as a woodworker, a craftsperson, and a maker. It seems I had inadvertently joined the Rockler Try That Challenge without even knowing it. Unfortunately, the challenge was over and I couldn't capture internet stardom by winning the contest. Instead, I had to live with the comfort that I tried something new, expanded my skills, and in the end, created a custom piece of furniture for a client that turned out simply wonderful. In the light of the Rockler Try That Challenge, Let's talk about some of the things I did in this project that I've never done before. The first thing that I had not previously tried was using a jig to taper some table legs. This seems rather mundane in hindsight, and it is possible that I've created my own jigs before, but I certainly had never used a jig to taper table legs. It turns out the process is relatively easy, but I did experience a few unexpected turns. The jig itself is super simple, made out of scrap wood and some MDF that I had laying around. I knew how wide the top and the bottom of the legs needed to be, so I made the jig to remove the difference. That worked perfectly for the first cut, but when I flipped the leg over, I no longer had a square surface to reference from. Pondering this for a minute, I used the cutoff from the first cut to recreate that 90 degree edge and the perfect reference point. I made the second cut and voila, I had my tapered legs. I repeated the process for the other legs and they were identical. Challenge one has now been surmounted. The second process I learned was how to use the Festool Domino. Love it or hate it, it is perfect for aligning parts and making joinery. I can honestly say learning the domino was the most enjoyable and rewarding time I have ever spent learning a new tool. Normally learning a new tool is frustrating and always yields less than perfect results the first few times. Not with the domino. Although it seems complicated at first with all the buttons and adjustments, it was actually very easy to set up and it worked perfectly the first time. I was blown away about how easy it was to use, and more importantly, how good the results were with literally no prior experience. If you are interested in an excellent deep dive into the domino, I will leave a link below to Drew Witt's video, which is the one that I used and it helped me understand all the settings, buttons, and knobs, and I also think it allowed me to have the success I had on my first try. With challenge two in the rear view mirror of all that Ford, I moved on to the next challenge. The third challenging skill was creating my first mortise and tenon joint with real honest to goodness hand tools. Well, mostly. I did use the bandsaw to remove most of the material, but I used a chisel and a mallet to remove the material for the tenon. Unlike the domino, I found this process extremely difficult and impossible to get good results. Jonathan Katz Moses and Eric Curtis make it look way easier than it is. Though my second tenon looked better than my first, it was still very challenging and certainly a skill that I need to continue working on. Perhaps spending some time sharpening my freshly unboxed chisels 
would have had made things just a little bit easier. The fourth new thing I tried was Rubio Monocoat. I bought into the YouTube hype and used it for the first time on this project. And I have to say, I do not regret it. I found Rubio easy to work with, and more importantly, easy to get good, consistent looking results. But my primary takeaway is that the internet is full of lies and misdirection. Shocking, I know, but let me explain. I applied Rubio to the entire tabletop, which is 15 square feet or around 200 square inches, in just under 12 minutes. It was easy, straightforward. But what the internet does not tell you is how hard it is to do the same on something that is not large and flat. It took me over 90 minutes to apply Rubio to the two legs and the one cross member. That's roughly 1,300 square inches of total surface area, or about 35% less than the top, yet it took me 650% more time to apply the Rubio. Now, this is not Rubio's fault by any stretch of the imagination. Any wipe-on product will suffer from this same problem, Flowing the product into a large flat slab is simply easier and less time consuming than non-flat parts. But this is where the internet is lying to you. You don't see content creators spending 90 minutes getting oil into every crack and crevice, and then spending another 90 minutes getting the oil out of those crack and crevices to make sure it is dry and cures properly. But in the way of challenges, this was not difficult at all. The final challenge is one that I knew about going into this project, and it kept me uneasy until the piece was delivered and the customer was happy. That is, this was my very first fully custom piece of furniture. I've built tables and desks before, but I've never built every single part by hand. By this metric alone, it was my most challenging build that I've ever done. When you combine that fact with all the other firsts, I'm a little surprised I got it done without any major hitches. I challenged myself and I am very proud of the results. More importantly, the customer is also happy and I guess that's all that matters in the end for a commissioned project. So before you dismiss challenges like the Rockler Try That Challenge as frivolous, as I did, consider the many ways that a challenge like that will help you grow and become a better maker, woodworker, and perhaps even a better person in the process. In some cases, internet challenges are a waste of time and energy, and they were created solely to provide content for full-time content creators or to benefit the sponsor in some way. In this case, trying something new grew my skills and created a piece of art that I am proud of. And for that, I thank Rockler for the challenge that I didn't even know that I was joining. If you are interested in other projects that I've made, then check out this playlist right here. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for getting this far. And don't forget to be inspired.